If you've ever quoted lines from Top Gun, then your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. Go ahead and click the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button too. Now let's get to the manure. Many people call that the double hammer hit. Some call it a pinwheel or a hammer spin, but you know what? Technically, it's in the family of maneuvers collectively known as tumbles. And this one works exactly like a lump shabak on a descending vertical line. Before I can walk you through my helmet cam video and show you how the double hammer head is flown, you need to know a few things about Science. the double hammer head, like all tumbles, works because there's a big, heavy gyroscope spinning on the front of the plane that looks like a propeller. Normally, that propeller is happy to spin fast and make lots of thrust. So if you keep the airplane straight and level, it all moves along at high speed. In another corner of the plane's performance envelope is the realm of low speed, high power, which is where the most exciting air show maneuvers can be made to happen in the right hands. First, let's look at a regular hammerhead. This is a basic aerobatic maneuver done at full power. The plane is flown up. Then as it runs out of speed, the left rudder is kicked all the way in. The plane pivots. This happens due to airflow over the tail from the prop wash. As the nose points down at the ground, kick in right rudder on the downline, then neutral rudder, it's done. You cannot make the plane pivot through another rotation by simply holding in the left rudder. If you tried, the nose would go a little past straight down, then you would be flying towards the ground with a lot of left yaw like this. What makes the double hammerhead happen is the pilot taking advantage of gyroscopic precession to make the second pivot occur. If you don't know what gyroscopic precession is, you're not alone. Most pilots don't understand it either, which is why I made this video. The two basic properties of gyroscopes are rigidity and precession. Rigidity in space is the primary trait of a spinning rotor, which is really inertia. Newton's first law says a body in motion tends to move in a constant speed and direction unless acted upon by an external force. If you've ever spun a coin on a table, then you've seen gyroscopic rigidity. The coin spins on its edge until friction against the table makes it slow down enough to fall over. Friction is the external force. Precession is a bit more complicated. It's the tilting of the rotor axis as a result of external forces. When a force is applied to the edge of a spinning rotor, the force causes the rotor to move 90 degrees ahead in the direction of rotation. Helicopter pilots know all about this. Most airplanes, including my pits, have a propeller that spins clockwise when you look at it from the cockpit. If I push the stick forward and make the nose go down, it also moves left because the result of the force happens 90 degrees ahead of the direction of the prop's rotation. I can prove it. Let's do some kitchen science. I've got a little model of my pit special made of cardboard hanging with a gyroscope on the front, just like the one you played with when you were a kid. And I've set it up so that the rotor part is turning in the same direction clockwise as viewed from the pilot seat, just like in your airplane. Now the gyroscope's not turning right now, and notice I can just give a little push on the tail of this thing and it spins right around. No problem. No rigidity in space, it's free to turn just hanging on this piece of string. All right, let's start the gyroscope. All right, I'm just gonna attach the motor to the gyroscope and power it up. Can you hear that? Kind of sounds like a jet engine coming up to speed, doesn't it? The gyroscope's running, and let's check for gyroscopic rigidity in space. So notice I can push on it. The airplane doesn't really want to move. Look at that, I'm pushing on the tail. It doesn't want to change direction. I'm gonna pretend I'm pushing stick forward, elevator goes down. See that nose move to the left? Now what happens if I pull stick back, elevator goes up? Nose moves to the right. Now what about left rudder? 
Notice the nose goes up. What about right rudder? Nose, nose goes down. Next, we're gonna look at the double hammerhead from my helmet cam in normal speed, just like I see it at an air show. Then we'll go through it in slow motion as I talk through it step by step. This is not flight instruction. It's just information to help you understand what's going on inside the cockpit while I fly maneuvers in an actual air show. Now we're going to look at it again in slow motion play by play. The crowd gets the best view of the double hammerhead by seeing the top of the plane. I'll dive into the box from Airshow right after a half Cuban. I get lots of smash, then pull vertical at Airshow center. Then roll one quarter turn to position the plane in front of the crowd. After setting the vertical upline, I tilt the nose away from the crowd about 25 degrees, which sets up the pivot to maximize gyroscopic precession. Before running out of speed like in a normal hammerhead, I kick left rudder but keep the stick centered. As the nose rotates down about 45 degrees in vertical, I pull the stick back a bit then slam it forward. This moves the nose towards the wheels which makes the gyroscopic precession occur that carries the nose around in another rotation. As the nose completes the second rotation and points at the ground, kicking right rudder stops it on the down line. Then after building some speed, I do another quarter roll then recovery to level flight and on to the next maneuver. That wraps up our discussion of the double hammerhead. Hope you enjoyed it, it's a fun maneuver. If you like the video, please leave your feedback in the comment section below. Until next time, fly safe.